Well done. You've successfully completed the Sitting Guild's International Spoken ESOL workshop with a focus on accuracy. Um, accuracy is just one of the assessment criteria. As we saw in the workshop, it's not the most important one, but very often learners feel that it is. Very often learners worry. And I think the first thing to do if we reflect on the workshop, the first thing that I hope you enjoyed, was to feel that we're not looking for mistakes. It's not inaccuracy that's the criterion. It's a sufficient degree of accuracy. You can look back over the workshop any time, and you've got ideas that, that you can take forward into your teaching. One idea that I would strongly recommend is the whole philosophy of accuracy. What does it actually mean? Learners very often think that it's just grammar. It's not, and that's not what the examiner thinks. If you think back to the workshops, we try to give you the examiner's point of view. That's very important because it's the examiner who's in the position of assessing and evaluating what the learner produces. Accuracy includes grammar. It also includes lexis, the appropriate word or phrase in the right place. At higher levels, appropriate collocations. Very important that we look at accuracy of function. In a communicative teaching approach, in a communicative learning classroom, if we give the wrong message, then we don't succeed. So accuracy is not just getting the verb tenses correct, it is getting the language itself to be put across in a way that will communicate the intended message. Accuracy will obviously, as we saw in the workshop, change according to the level. We expect more of a C1 level learner than we do of a B1 achiever. And I think it's up to the teacher. I think it's up to you and me to adapt. The learners will tend to see mistakes as mistakes and usually think that they're things which must be corrected automatically. Um, here's just a very general tip, something you may have used already, but something that we try to do, to distinguish and differentiate between hot correction and cold correction. Hot correction is where errors and mistakes are corrected there and then, on the spot. It's often what learners want, it is less often what will help them to develop the other skills. There will always be some tension between accuracy and the other sub-skills, fluency, range and overall communication. Cold correction is when the teacher sits back to some extent, when the teacher lets the learners know that they can continue and he or she will monitor. In the past it was very difficult to do this, but with today's technology you can use voice recorders, you can record what people say, you can analyse errors, you can correct what's important and you can show learners how they can improve their accuracy. And if their accuracy is sufficient for a certain level, get them not to worry too much about it, but to go ahead and practice the other skills. So, I hope that you found the Accuracy Workshop helpful. I hope that you can take the ideas into your classroom and as I've said before, the teacher role is very important in the speaking test and the um, sub-skills and I think in accuracy the teacher needs to be a sympathetic helper, um, not an over-corrector, but what the teacher needs to do is to get across the message that I hope we got across in the workshops, that accuracy is not all important. It's important, but it's not everything. Thank you.